Hi kids, my name is Mr. John with the Buena Vista Museum and today we're going to be making pinwheels. Hi kids, do you like to make things? Well today we're going to be making something that will make you smile. It could harness the wind to create energy, but also it has some mysterious things attached to it. It'll teach you how to make pinwheels like this one. It's not attached to a stick. Here's another one. This is a paper windmill. And then the smallest one we'll be making is with computer paper on a pencil and a pencil eraser. So we're gonna walk through those, um, but I'm gonna show you the kits. This is a kit that we have at the museum. Each kit has paper in it that's multicolored on both sides. You have a color and white on all the colored paper and one piece of eight and a half by 11 copier paper. And it has a piece of bamboo, a dowel, a pencil, two pencil erasers, and two tacks. So these are your items that come with your kit and it'll be available on the museum's website. But today I'm going to show you how to make these at your house. I also need to show you, you'll need a pair of scissors. The scissors are not included in the kit. Before we go into the demonstration, I want to ask you two scientific questions. Do you know what air is? This jar contains air. If you look at it closely, the air is invisible. And then if you try to put air on a scale, it doesn't weigh anything. You, you could go like this and you're touching air, but what's the difference between air and wind? Well, wind is air in motion. It blows a flag. When you see a flagpole and the flag's waving, it's the wind moving the flag. The wind blows the leaves down the street. The wind, you could feel blow up against you on a windy day. You have your jacket or your sweater held tightly because you're trying to stay warm. So the wind is air in action. Those are our two scientific terms I want you to remember. But today we're going to make windmills in different ways. To start off, I'm going to show you if you fold that in half, you have two rectangles. And what we want to do in all these examples is start off making our project with a square. So I'm going to show you, you take one end of the paper and you fold it to the other end and you want the ends to line up. And what did I do? I made a triangle. As you can see, this is how you make a triangle or a square out of a piece of paper that's a rectangle. And you can do this by creasing it very tightly and gently pulling and applying pressure and not even using a pair of scissors, you could make a square out of the rectangle by folding it and tearing off the excess amount. Usually in origami projects, they always use a square. So you fold it up one way, now you're gonna fold it the other direction. And now I'm gonna get my pin here and show you a trick. I'm gonna draw a line where the creases are so you could see it, hopefully. Now, you'll see there's really, there's really four triangles that we just created. Now, under each triangle, I want you to look at the right side. So this is the right side of this triangle. This is the right side of this triangle. And you don't need to do this. I'm just highlighting it so you could see what side is the right side. You don't need to do this on your paper. So what you're gonna do under each triangle you're going to take your scissors now and you're going to cut one half of each area. So if it's four inches long, you're going to cut approximately two inches. And this isn't a scientific and exact, like you're making candy, you want to have exact measurements. But when you're baking uh, banana bread or something, you could add extra walnuts or extra raisins, so it doesn't matter. Well, this is kind of like making banana bread. You could use approximates. I didn't measure the length. I used the scissors and you could see I only cut on the right side. 
Why are we doing that? Because on the right side, you're going to fold that corner up here. But before you do that, you're going to take your glue stick, circle in the middle, and I'm not going to do it. I'm just demonstrating it. And that end will stay down. You're going to rotate it, take your glue stick again, do another size circle like the size of a quarter, take the right triangle corner up there, do another circle, You're going to rotate it, take the right side, put it up there again, put some more glue, and the last corner would be right here, more glue stick, put it here, and what you're going to see is I just created this, which is the pinwheel out of paper. The next step, you want to get, tell your parents, hey, can I borrow a quarter, or if you have a quarter in your piggy bank, you're going to trace it on the paper, and you're going to make a circle, and I'm not doing a very good job here, or you could take a round object, like a quarter would be a good size, because again, put some more glue, you're going to tape that to the middle, and you see how that holds all the pieces together, and you want to let it sit for maybe an hour. I let mine sit overnight, and then when you come back the next day, you could use your scissors, it's taped down really well, and you're going to use your scissors, I'm going to use the bigger example here, you're going to use your scissors to slide in here and help lift up the corners, and you're going to kind of fold them so they, they, they puff up, and that's going to allow you them to catch the wind, and you can see here, I'm sticking these under the corner. I let it dry overnight, so this stuck really good. And if you get in a hurry and you do it like, oh, right then, that centerpiece may come up. But I let mine stick all night, and now you can see how there's air um, will catch in there, and it'll spin really well. Like on this one, it's a smaller model, but I wanted to show the big model for demonstration purposes. But as you can see on the back of this, we had a doweling, a pencil eraser, and a tack in the front. So I wanted to make it fairly safe for you kids out there, but you really need to talk to your parents if you're okay to use the tack. In the next step, I want to show you how to attach the pinwheel to a dowel. You take the dowel, and I came up with this methodology where you add a pencil eraser, has not been used. You're going to take your pinwheel, lay down the eraser, down and you're going to gently take the tack, be careful so you don't poke yourself, and push it through the middle and if you can't do this have a parent or an adult help you and you're going to see I'm applying the pinwheel to the very top of the eraser and, and this will spin quite easily once it's attached. Now on the smaller ones we have a pencil and again you have two pencil erasers. You could add actually attach your pinwheel to the pencil eraser and it you have to see the smaller ones fit on the pencils so you, you'll be able to attach two of them very easily and if you want more or smaller ones or bigger ones that's up to you and your family and you could use pencils or get some doweling from your local hardware store. Um, initially I was just going to have you attach it to the doweling with a hammer and a nail and I thought that's too much work so I got the pencil eraser in this, and then in your kit, you also get a unused pencil and another eraser and another tack, so when you make the smaller ones, you'll be able to create um, several of these and two of these and at least three of these. So in your kit, you'll be able to make five windmills, but we have over 25 pinwheels at the museum, and they spin. I had this idea one time that I'm taking a piece of bamboo and it goes in the windmill. Um, the windmill goes in there, but I have this tapped into the ground. So tell your parents, you want to tap this in the ground about three or four inches and you put this in the middle. But the key is, if you see, the hole is big enough that this isn't in there tightly. So it'll be spinning and then it'll turn. And that's good because that means your pinwheel will last longer. The power of the wind won't break the, the pinwheel. If you didn't rotate, there'd be all this extra force and, and on, the, on the parts of the windmill, it would break much sooner than this model, but it's very creative. I have some in the ground 
in my front yard and I have some attached to my fence outside my kitchen window so you'll see them rotate. Thank you for watching my video. Please um, look at other videos for Buena Vista Natural History Museum. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson.